Hey friends, it's me, Micah. This is the Homestead Bandwagon. Today I'm testing a multifunction welder. Now, I'm a sucker for a multi-tool, but frankly, most multi-tools promise to do every function in the world, and they stink at all of them. Uh, for me, I don't have a lot of spare time in my life, so when I'm you know, home after working 10 or 11 hours at work, uh, I want to be able to get in, get a job done, and get out of there. And if I'm working with a, one of these multi-tools that's supposed to save me time, and it doesn't save me time, it just takes more time fiddling around, it gets kind of frustrating. This is a multi-process welder. Um, so this welder was sent to me from Andeli. I didn't pay for it, okay? They had sent me a welding helmet and asked me to review it, and they sent me a a welder and asked me to review it. And I'm always kind of reticent to do that. I don't want to waste anybody's time just making an infomercial about something. You know, I usually want to do videos about things that are actually useful. But I agreed to do it because it did seem like an interesting machine. Um, it claims to do five processes. MIG welding with gas, MIG welding without gas, so flux core welding, stick welding, lift TIG, which frankly I think is kind of gimmicky, we could get into that later, and plasma cutting, which seemed really interesting to me. Plus, this thing either works on uh, 220 volts, right, regular like welding voltage, or there's a little adapter it comes with to run it on 110. So this is a portable welder that you could take to wherever you're doing a repair, plug it into a regular household outlet and do your repair. And being a multi-process machine, let's say we needed to cut out a piece of metal with the plasma cutter and then tack in a new piece of metal with the welder, you could do that all on one machine on a 110 outlet. Seemed really interesting to me. So what I'm gonna look at on this one, it's can it actually save us time if you're a novice like I am can you just get in and get a job done? So is the machine easy to use? Is each function simple enough that without an engineering degree, you can just get in here and start using it? Um, is switching functions simple? You know, switching from MIG welding to plasma cutting to stick welding, is it fast and easy to do? Again, without having to bust your brain or read a 20 page manual. And then does it work? Um, does it? weld well? Does it plasma cut well? In the hands of a novice. Can I make this thing work without being a professional? Now I also did a, a, a little project with this thing and we'll kind of do that at the end of the video where I had to do a very awkward weld on a piece of equipment here, a, a set of pallet forks, um, and then I tested it to see if that weld would hold. Again, in the hands of a novice, will this weld hold? So is this a good tool to have around the homestead for saving us time and space and efficiency? Let's find out. Now, if you happen to want this welder, there will be a link to it in the description of this video. Feel free to check it out. Okay, so right now I've got this one on the stick mode. So you've got a button here to click through your different modes. Stick mode's about as easy as this one gets. You just turn down or up your amperage and that's all there is to it. You put the stick in the, in the electrode holder and go through. So using this as a stick welder, pretty easy. They don't have any extra fancy options for changing different settings or anything. It's just stick welding. The one most people I think are gonna use is up here. So this S function, that's uh, uh, MIG welding with the synergy setting. So you have your, your, uh, your power and your, your uh, wire speed, and they just work together. Now on the other side, you got some other options. You can tell it if you're working with CO2, if you're working with mixed gas, or if you're using with flux core wire. Two T's where you 
push a button on the MIG gun and it feeds wire out until you release. 4T, you hit the button, it starts feeding and powering until you hit it again to turn off. And then spot, this is for spot welding. Hit the button, it gives it a little zippy zap. So I like this on 2T. And then this over here, this is, which is kind of hard to see for whatever reason on this camera, the size of the wire. So 0.8, 0.9, and 1. So I'm using really thin wire on this one so I can use this thing for, for thinner welding applications. Then you have another button here for when you're using your gas. So this uh, this will change your gas flow settings. I didn't use the glass in this. Gas is too futzy for me. So I just like using flux core welding. That doesn't look too terrible to me. You know, I'm not I'm not an expert welder by any means, but. Uh, push the button again. This is manual TIG. So this is where we can individually change our wire speed or our power. So if you do want to get a little deeper into this thing and, uh, and really, really, really dial in your settings, you can if you want to. So I like it. It's a little expandable. Again, you know, if I decide to start getting into gas welding, maybe I will want to start messing with some of these options. Uh, this button here is for TIG, and uh, TIG, to me, TIG's gotten to be kind of like a, a thing all these companies say their machines do. They use what they call lift TIG, where you, you would have to go buy your own TIG gun because none, none of them seem to come with it. It always has electricity going through it, so you don't have the foot pedal that you usually use in, in TIG, and then you touch the metal and then lift it to start that arc. For me, TIG's just, again, too futzy, just kind of a waste of my time. Um, when I have perfectly good welding options available around here. I'm not a professional. So I didn't test the TIG. They all say they do it. I'm sure they do it just fine. And then the last one here, that's your plasma cutting again. Turn up, turn down your power, and then this button, you can affect your pre-flow and post-flow of your air. So when you hit the button on your plasma cutter initially, if it's on this 2T setting, it'll start the air and then press it again, gets the electricity flowing. In 4T, it's press the button, it's on to you, press the button again and turn it off, but it does have air controls on there, which is actually kind of nice. I've just left those alone. It seems to do fine without it, or without me messing with it. Okay, so let's talk about switching between functions. So right now I have this thing set up for doing plasma cutting, right? So we'd plasma cut something and then want to take maybe a plate that we cut, it, cut to size and weld it to something else to repair it. So we gotta disconnect our plasma cutting stuff. Uh, airline, we would take that off first. Oops, it helped if I unscrewed the right thing. So that's off. Um, now there's a, a, the, uh, the grounding clamp here. We could leave that plugged in here, but boy, this space is really pretty tight in here where your hands go. So it's easiest just to remove that. And then we can get in here and unscrew the electrical connection for the plasma welder. Um, doing this with gloves, pretty difficult. Operating this stuff up here, the buttons and functions, pretty easy with gloves. But moving the stuff over, you gotta take your gloves off. It's a really kind of a tight space. So plasma cutter's off. We'll put our electrode or our, why do I call it an electrode? A clamp back on and it goes on the positive. Now this thing has nothing to really tell you when your positive should, or when your, your clamp, where it should be. So sometimes I kind of mix it up and I put it on the wrong spot. Not the end of the world, but it'd be really nice if there's a diagram on here somewhere showing you without you having to dig around, find your book and go, okay, now where do I put this thing for these different functions? So maybe on the side of the machine, I'll just end up making a little diagram of Sharpie or something. Anyway, we've got our clamp on the positive. Then there's this little pigtail here that I connect down here to the negative, which basically makes this 
the negative. Um, so this is the, the MIG welder. Now you'll notice that I already had this thing attached and that's because you know, the wire goes through this thing. I don't wanna have to cut it off and restart it every time I go to use it. Um, so you could unscrew this thing and pull it off and then you have to clip your wire that's running through it or you just leave it hooked up all the time and just don't have this electrode or this, uh, this jumper connected and then you're fine. Um, so something to think about. So we can MIG weld, we could do our little weld, but maybe we need to do a stronger weld or a deeper weld, or I don't know, maybe you just feel like doing some stick welding. Um, pretty easy to switch. Um, we take our jumper off. To move to stick, you would take your, uh, your, uh, your clamp and you'd move it over to where that jumper was. And then you gotta find your stick welding thingamadoo. There it is. And hook it up. So not too bad there at all. Now one thing I did really appreciate about this machine is that the cables on it are very long. Um, so I mean, if your electricity is in one place and the work, plate, work piece is in another, you can probably reach it with these cables. I mean, they're like, I don't know, I think the plasma cutter cable is like 15 feet long. Um, so nice long cables, which can be a real frustration with the machine um, if you can't reach your work piece. Um, they're plenty long. The ground clamp cable is probably your shortest of them all. And it still gives you some pretty good distance. So if your table is all the way over here, which it is, and your power is all the way over there, you can still reach that, uh, that table or that workplace workpiece to clamp it. Okay, so let's wrap it up here. Is this thing easy to use? Uh, yes, I found it pretty easy to use. Um, the owner's manual for this thing isn't very useful, so you just gotta kinda get in there and figure it out, and for the most part, I could. Stick welding is easy as it gets. Put a stick in the electro electrode holder, turn up your heat to where it needs to be, drag it across the metal, and stick weld. MIG welding can be a little more finicky, so you might have to do a little Googling or YouTubing to figure out all the intricacies of MIG welding, but dialing in the settings, settings really easy. Um, setting it up initially, you know, if the wire kind of isn't behaving for you, setting this thing up initially can be kind of a pain like any flux core MIG welder is. Um, it would be nice if on the inside of the machine there was a button to feed the wire in initially instead of you needing to, on the outside of the machine, pull your, your trigger to feed the wire through this whole works. Some of them have that on the inside, but once you have the wire in, you can just leave it. It's, to me, not very fun to change wire, which is nice that this thing's multi-process, and we'll get to that, because it kind of solves that problem of you know, taking a lot of time to change wire for different thicknesses of metal. Um, and then plasma cutting, was that easy to do? It was okay. Um, I'm still getting the hang of it. I had never used a plasma cutter before. My initial attempts at plasma cutting did not go very well at all. Um, I just failed miserably initially. Um, the big problem being when I had this thing on the same circuit as the air compressor, because you have to hook it to an air compressor when you're doing plasma cutting, there wasn't enough amperage to go around. So they were robbing amperage from each other. Eventually I just kind of blew a circuit breaker. So you got a couple choices. You can either set this up where it's, uh, you, you kind of preload your air compressor tank, do your cuts, then turn your air compressor back on to, to re recharge that tank because this thing takes a lot of air to work it um, or run it on a different circuit from the air compressor, which might not be a possibility in all cases. Um, or like I did, I just put some 220 in here and then ran this thing on 220. And when I tested it on 220, this thing cranks. I cut through a quarter inch sheet of steel uh, pretty readily.
I was very impressed. The cuts didn't look the cleanest, but I think that's more about user error than anything else. So plasma cutting, it certainly does do. Um, switching functions, pretty easy from function to function. And then getting your fingers in here to work all this stuff, it's a pretty, there's a pretty tight space in here um, to work within. Wasn't really easy. You're not gonna do this with gloves. You'll work on all these functions, you can do with gloves easy. But switching your functions with gloves was kind of a mess, so it wasn't very easy to do that. Uh, but overall, switching functions was really nice. And I guess we would talk about switching functions when I did this project with welding uh, a D-shackle holder onto the tractor. So I didn't do any plasma cutting to do this, but what I did use is the MIG function. I used that to tack weld this uh, uh, D-shackle holder onto the bottom of my tractor forks. And it was a very, very tight space in there, not a lot of room to maneuver. Um, one thing that did come in handy is that these cables are really long. So they stretched quite a long ways from where I had this thing plugged in to where I could get the forks to. I liked that. Uh, getting the tack welds was very easy with the MIG, but I didn't want to have to switch MIG wire to a thicker wire. I had this on a thinner wire because I wanted to uh, do some tack welding on some other stuff and I want my MIG kind of dedicated to that thinner metal task because I can switch to stick welding to do thicker metal stuff, that deeper penetrating welds, but that stick welding can blow through thinner metal. So it's nice to have the MIG for skinny stuff, the, 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 the stick for thicker stuff. And it was easy to switch between the functions. Um, I got my weld done and on the tractor um, and used that D-shackle and tried it out to see if I could lift a very heavy weight and the weld held. So for me, a complete amateur, this thing completed my task. It created a strong weld and I could be confident in using the machine. So I think that it's easy to use. Switching functions was simple. It works, it plasma cuts, it welds. It seems like a great machine overall. Now, I didn't try it out with gas because I think gas is too fiddly because for me, the central theme is not wasting time and being portable. I can't portable gas everywhere, it's heavy these big containers, but I can lift the machine, take it wherever there's a 110 outlet, plug it in and do, and do a quick weld. That's ideal. So definitely think this is a decent machine. Um, link to it in the description if you want to check it out. Thanks for watching. Appreciate you.